Hello and welcome to part 19 of Arcania, the complete tale or of Arcania yeah, Fall of Satara. Let's we left off. We collected the artifacts of the goddess and was in fact the shield we gave to Selena, the last of the Anno Siri. Unfortunately, the demons took the shield and the demon escaped with it into the volcano. Which, as it turned out, the reason is the reason why the volcano erupted. The demon was released. Also, it turns out that the goddess is actually Adanos, this god of balance. And Enos and Beliar are concepts that were eventually made into gods. Just lore stuff. Now, we're going to go through here. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. Okay, we're going to go through here. I thought this was going to be a bit more trickier than- Oh crap, this is poison. This is literally a poison filled hallway. Crap. Oh wait, I don't really have much to worry about. That was easy. Now. Stewark. I wonder what they were doing here. Okay, uh, recent game. Oh my god, that thing is huge. Possessed troll. Ow. Burn, 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 burn. Just before he killed me, too. <laughs> Oh man, that was actually pretty good. Uh, gaming news lately. Um, I... I tried playing Sleeping Dogs. Unfortunately, it, the disc was scratched. Gonna have to send it back and see if I can get a new copy. Nothing against Sleeping Dogs. I mean, I beat the game. I beat the game on the PS3. It was fun. And I thought, hey, if I can... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. And you know, like, if I can... Uh, you know, play the game again on the PS4 of all the DLC, I thought, you know, let's do that. Unfortunately, the game, the game decides to be a dick. I mean, nothing against it, I mean, a game set in Hong Kong, you hardly, if ever, see Hong Kong in any form of media. Maybe an original, you know, a uh, state that is heavily Asian influenced, but, yeah, like, other than that, you don't really see much, but... Really, I'm just kind of, you know, glad that, um, about Sleeping Dogs. It's a shame that the developers kind of went belly up. I would have loved to have seen more from them. Uh, I mean, I know that we're working on an online game for it. That's the axe. I don't even want to know what that stuff is. I don't even want to know if that's going to kill me or not. Oh great, shock traps. Nope. Um... Oh yeah, uh, recent news is coming out that... Well, there's recent news that I've learned a few days ago is that the Elder Scrolls Online is getting a Morrowind expansion. Meaning, we get to go to Morrowind and deal with the political houses there in the second era. Admittedly, I want to see that. Because I only played Morrowind on the Xbox. Granted, this was around the time I first started getting into the Elder Scrolls series. That's when I first saw into the Elder Scrolls series. And admittedly, I feel that Morrowind was the... It was my first um, time playing an Elder Scrolls game. I had no idea what to do. What else is new, really? Oh shit, I one-shot him! But... Um, yeah. I finally beat- I like- I mean, I'd never played the Elder Scrolls before, and... Well... Morrowind was my first attempt at it 
sadly it didn't go as well and I stopped playing Morrowind. Never really got that far into it. I mean, I know the mod support for Scott for Morrowind is still up. I mean, there's a freaking mod to make Morrowind in with uh, Skywind. Morrowind and Skyrim S graphics. Fuck. Yeah, keep trying, boy. Might as well, you know, just use some archery. Switch things up. But yeah, the f at first ever Elder Scrolls game that I loved to death was Oblivion. I know. Big shocker. But... Come on, I mean, Oblivion was what got me into the Elder Scrolls series, and I loved it. The whole knight in shining armor aesthetic, the... Many quests involving, you know, uh, the Knights of the Nine, Shale Gorath, those two DLCs I love. The Thieves' Den, which basically was how I got so much scratch in the first place. Admittedly, that was just awesome. And really, I'm just, you know, really happy I got to play the other scrolls because of it. I believe it was like my first game. And, you know, really, I was just happy. I got a chance to play a great game and I remember waking up every morning just to immediately, immediately start playing the Oblivion. I call those my Oblivion days. And growing up I could just play as like this knight in shining armor I could be. I still remember going back to playing that game almost all the time. And I still remember my character, he became the Archmage and the uh, Grandmaster of the Fighters Guild. And when I started playing Skyrim, you know, uh, Skyrim was, is still a great game, don't get me wrong. It's still a bit more grayer and I really like the aesthetically, uh, the aesthetic of the whole Norse mythology that's going on, Scandinavian mythology with it. And, well, the con- like, really just finding out that all the stuff that I did in, in Oblivion is just moot. It's just sad, like, finding out that without Martin Septon, the Empire pretty much crumbled in on itself. And I remember the Empire. That was- that was something great. But seeing that it's pretty much been gutted and turned against each other by the Almeri Dominion, who I now hold a deep hatred for, it's- it's kind of sad. It's kind of one of the reasons why I joined the Stormcloak Rebellion. Oh boy, and I'm going to open up so many can of worms here, but yeah, I'm a Stormcloak, through and through. Okay? I feel that in my preferred headcanon is that, yeah, Skyrim, Skyrim was not going to be used, was going to be, uh, was going to be attacked by the Empire a while back due to the, due to the fact that well, the Empire outlawed Talos worship. All because the Almeri Dominion were freaking... were being assholes about it, and really that's just bullcrap. The Empire would never submit. The fact that they did kind of show that the Empire has changed since then. But if that's the case, then what about Skyrim? Should it not change? Should it not be allowed to uh, fight against uh, the... Uh, fight against the Almeri Dominion? I mean, Hammerfell seceded from the Empire and fought the Almeri Dominion and won. That's, that's just... That's just like being badass. And there's like even Mothic, like, you know, uh, fixed most of the problems that were supposed to happen with the Civil War questline, like... Uh... A mod that's supposed to overhaul the... Uh, Civil War aspect of the game. Oh my god, that was so beautiful. And really, I was just, you know, I, when I did the Civil War, I thought, you know, I'm going to join the Stormcloaks. And I really liked it because Talos is, Talos was the patron deity for the Stormcloaks. And like, really everyone was trying to, you know, be the good, was like trying to think, oh, Skyrim should be free, be from the north. And like, people have the counter argument saying that Ulfric's power hungry and that all he cares about is himself. And no, uh... And Skyrim is for the Nords only. 
My head cannon is the fact that, yeah, Skyrim is for the Nords, but if it's going to become the seat of the next empire, many people is think many people see that it's the seat of the original empire, like where it was founded, and really like. Like, to me, like, the Empire... The Septim Dynasty was the last great Septim Dynasty. A lot of people people want, would want it back. Personally, I feel that it's time for a change. I want to see Skyrim be able to fight the Aldmeri Dominion and win. There's even a mod quest line that actually has you reinforce Skyrim's position to become independent, to be even more independent by allying with the Orcs and the... Red Guards to build up a sizable force against the Almeri Dominion. And, well, don't get me wrong, the Imperials have their own, uh, they have like their own reasons for do for siding with them. And, there and a lot of Imperial backed uh, players actually will explain their reasoning for it. I remember my friends and I always used to have like a, uh, have like this argument whenever we chose our sides with the Imperials or the Stormcloaks and. Well, I can't honestly understand. I mean, really, it comes down to player choice, and we gotta wait until Elder Scrolls 6. Maybe they'll have something be like, oh, the Stormcloaks won, or the Imperials won, or nobody won, or maybe the two of them agreed to an alliance and kicked the Aldmeri Dominion's ass, but like... Here's what I feel that my headcanon for 6 is gonna be. Both the Empire and the Stormcloaks ultimately we ultimately decide after some time of fighting is like, okay, we can't keep doing this anymore. How about we agree to a peace? Skyrim will remain its, will remain autonomous, but it will with its own laws and stuff, but it will have to serve the Empire. You can still worship Talos, but you will have the Empire as your side. Because that the Empire still gets the trading partner. Skyrim gets to remain in, gets its independence. Granted, it's become something of a vassal state for the Empire, but if you guys have ever played The Witcher 3 and you've done the quest to take out K King Radovid, there is actually the uh, option to actually do that. Because what Vernon Roche and the others are doing is they're basically assassinating Radovid because they made a deal with Nilfgaard. They do that. If they uh, take out Radovid, uh, they can stop. They, then Emir von Emrys, the Emperor of Nilfgaard, will halt the. Will uh, stop. Will take over, but it will will take over. Yeah, but it will allow Tamaria to be free to be autonomous as long as Tamaria doesn't attack it. Granted, most of it, most of Tamaria will be like surrounded by Nilfgaard, but at the very least. Tamaria will still remain free. If Skyrim were to do something like, if like Elder Scrolls 6 had something like that, and it's you know, uh, I guess in its, uh, and I guess in its lore, like what happens with the Civil War, that could work out both ways. Skyrim would be remain independent to do its own thing. The Empire would have Skyrim as an ally. Okay, I can't go up there. Let me try through. Sweet. And well, really, it makes a lot more sense because, like, if it goes like that, it would be a lot easier for Skyrim to maintain its independence. The Empire would get an ally, and in case of the Alberi Dominion were to go up against them again, it would mean that both sides would have a personal stake in taking out the Dominion. Which I personally feel is actually a smarter option. I kind of wish that there was a mod where they could have been like a, an alliance between the two of the Imperials and it, if there was like an alliance between the Imperials and Skyrim. Because that actually sounds like it could have worked. But the Almeri Dominion as we know would never want that. But then again, who gives a fuck about the Almeri Dominion? Maybe, you know, Elder Scrolls 6 will have us deal with, uh, I guess the fallout of whatever happens, and maybe a political schism going on in the Almeri Dominion. Maybe? I don't know. Just saying, that would actually be pretty cool though, if it did. 
But enough about my ramblings about Skyrim. Um, yeah, Morrowind. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online. I'm gonna admit this. I wanna actually get more. I wanna actually get the expansion now, just because I never tried Morrowind out, and I wanna try it out in the and online, especially with one Tamriel. Oh shit! A magma spider. I love this war bow. Did I get him? I think I got him. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, just in all honesty, I want to actually try, I want to actually, you know, maybe get it. See if, you know, Gamefly can have a rental or if I have to, you know, buy it. I'll, you know, try and buy it. Uh, more alchemical stuff. Let's see where this goes. But, yeah, I mean, you know, Morrowind, never tried it out. I mean, never fully tried it out, and I missed out on a lot, but let's see where this goes. Um, oh, recent news. In case you may, if any of you guys have been living under a rock, Samurai Jack is coming back. Yep, Jack is back. Coming out March 11th. And I'm going to say this right now. March is going to be a huge year for everybody. Samurai Jack's coming back. The final Dark Souls 3 DLC is coming out. And I don't know if this is true or not, but... Oh, I'm trying to remember if this is right, but I think the final... I think Horizon Zero Dawn's coming out that month, too. I don't remember much. Okay. Freaking texture poppins. What the hell? Huh? You! You are not one of those the demon possesses. Who are you? Has Corella sent you? No. Robar sent me to help you. Robar? So that's how low we've stooped. Now even our worst enemies need to help us. You are Ethel? Yes, the king of Argan and a cursed man. You shouldn't have summoned the demon to Satarif. It would have been banished long ago. I know. Now I know. But now is too late. We are lost. You, me, the whole world. No. We can still defeat the demon. Ha! Have you ever seen a creature so powerful that it can conjure fire? Yes. And make the whole mountain burst? No. No, I haven't. I have. I have seen it with my own eyes. We can still defeat the demon. I have recovered the holy artifacts from the burial temple of the Satarifin kings underneath the town. There is no such burial temple underneath my town. Yes, there is. The earthquake revealed it. And how are these artifacts from that temple supposed to help us? Your ancestors used them to fight against the Jarkandar and the demons. I only miss the seal of the goddess. Then I can ban the demon. The seal of the goddess? A shield? Yes, have you seen it? A servant of the demon recently passed by my cell. He had a shield on him, but he took it to the demon. Then I'll defeat the demon and ban it with the shield. That sounds easier said than done. Why did you summon the demon to Sitarif? It was the last chance I saw to save Sitarif from the Mertanians. I understand, but how did you learn about the demon in the first place? Thoris brought an orc to my quarter, Shaman. He knew about the demon. He knew how to summon and control it. Yes, he even knew the right point of time to do it. How did he know all this? An old orcish prophecy mentioned it, and it was right. So glad that Gorn has you, because you're going to answer for this. Why did you lose control over the demon? The shaman. He interrupted his magic after the demon had defeated the Mertanians. He laughed out loud and screamed, Veliar! And then the demon descended on Satarif. It all went so fast, I didn't have the time to behead Grosh. The Orc Shaman was called Grosh? Yes. Then Lester killed him for you? Lester? A uh, friend. Well, that saves us trouble. At least now we know who the frick that was. Did the demon drag you here? No, I followed the demon when it entered the mountain. 
I was going to kill it, but then it sparked off the fire, and the earth began to tremble. A rock hit me and knocked me down, and then I woke up in this cell. Well, that explains this. Don't worry, Thorn. We're gonna get you out of here somehow. But... Oh god, what the frick was I saying? Oh god, I forgot. Um... Oh yeah, Samurai Jack. I'm really excited for Samurai Jack. Because I grew up on him. I grew up on watching Samurai Jack, Aku, all the Scotsmen, all the guys. And I was just really, you know, excited when they finally announced the final season for it. Because, according to what I read, the comic series that they made for it, I didn't read it. Oh, dang. Oh, dang. Well, there it is. Yeah, I never really read the comics, but I heard they're good. And they really expand on the lore of the story. Okay, demon, let's take it. Let's go, you and me. So, arch. Okay, final boss, I guess. The arch demon. Huh. Nice boss theme. Oh uh, no, I'm not risking it. If this is going to be anything like the Zisha boss fight, this should be easy. I think the only difference is because Zisha had a protective shield that I couldn't snipe it. Yo! Oh, that's going to leave a mark. Now attack, attack, attack! Okay, looks like he's... What are you doing? Oh! Oh crap, he's summoning men this time. That was easy. I'm amazed really that fire damage can really just, you know, end these guys. <laughs> Come on, ugly. I think this is it. This is the final episode. Come on. Come on. Yeah, join all your brothers and sisters. Shepherd, who had become a hero to the people of Argan and Mirtana, was their arbitrator. And even though there were some voices that bitterly opposed peace, you don't have to do that. We can defeat them. The voices of reason prevailed. Everything is going to be all right. Well, that's it. That's the finale of Arcania. Shimmy didn't really get a uh, better, I guess, um, I guess like a better final ending, but this is good. So, um, my final thoughts. I, I gotta say this was a really good game. I never played the original or the DLC for it. I mean, I bought it a few times, but I never really got this far. 
Really, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we finally were able to get it done. Granted, it was, it dragged on at times, don't get me wrong. But, Nordic Games did a really great job of, uh, you know, doing this. They did a really great job of, uh, porting this game over. They could have done a little bit better with the graphics, but, uh, yeah, graphics aren't really everything. They also could have done a bit better with the testers. Ah, uh, Zoltan. Yeah, the name really does exist. Uh, the quest system was okay, though I really wish they had a better, um, thing for it, like a better quest marker. Uh, the quests themselves were all interesting, although I wished, I mean, like, the ones to get the Beliar, the relics of the gods, I kind of wish that was, uh, Bit easier said than done. Um, the Falls of Tarok DLC, I gotta admit, it was you know pretty fun. I mean, it was nice to play as you know Gorn and Lester, get a little bit of taste of those two. <laughs> it was actually pretty you know entertaining. Kind of wish they had some achievements for this DLC, you know, like just saying, but. Um, really? I'm kind of sad that this isn't actually canon to the our Gothic series anymore. Because this used to be, like I've been explaining throughout the Let's Play, this used to be a part of the Gothic series, but there was some political, uh... Uh... I guess... Uh... Things going on behind the scenes that they couldn't, you know, um... Fix. But... With the acquisition that Piranha Bytes, I mean the develop, not Piranha Bytes, the guys who originally made the Gothic series have it again, they decide to make all this non-canon. I guess this is more like a what if story, if I guess it would be. But really, I feel that this was a you know an okay game. It was decent. It was fun. Had a bit of bugs, but I did good. I mean, we all did good. Mage of Adanos. <laughs> Extras, Grim Grimgol. I gotta admit, these nicknames are hilarious. Um, the final ending. I have to admit, I'm gonna say this now. I think maybe we're gonna be. I don't know if they ever decide to continue the story. I mean, I feel this is a good way to end off the series because, like, if this isn't canon anymore, I feel this is you know might as well just get it done. In loving memory of Armin Gessert. Aww. Whoever Armin was, rest in peace, man. But, yeah. Really, I felt that this ending was, a, was good. I mean, the DLC felt a little bit rushed, but personally, it tied up a few loose ends with this DLC, with the DLC and the story. Like, Robar's back to his normal self. He's got his friends by his side. He now has the Shepherd from Fesher as his arbitrator for the peace. Though Lord Hogan, what he sounded like, he sounded like he, we, they could fight, but it looks like cooler heads prevailed. I got a feeling something might happen with him one day. But yeah, um, it's nice to that they have done well but I wish they could have explained a bit more of the story like the goddess I mean I felt like they kind of rushed it a bit with that because like the goddess herself is uh the goddess herself is basically Adanos the god the original god who basically who the concepts of good and evil Inos and Beliar came from her which is now him but Really, like, this is interesting because it shows that with the passage of time, concepts of deities and creatures vary and vary depending on the ages. Like, well, well, Beliar and Enos. Because remember what Robar said at the near the end? He said he banished the gods. So, if they're gonna make an arc on a gothic four on their own I want to know what the heck are they going to do like those the three endings for gothic three had basically humans take out the orcs the orcs take out the humans or the king 
basically banishing the gods and letting mankind decide their own fate. But as he said, the gods work, the fates and gods work in mysterious ways, more than he knows. So if they ever do make a gothic 4, a true gothic 4, I'm curious as to what are they going to do? Like, like, what the hell are they going to do? Like, what are they going to choose for the ending? Or are they going to make a new one? If they pull a deus ex, I'm going to be pissed. So, yeah, that's our Kanye Gothic 4, people. Um, what exactly am I going to let's play next? I've been doing some thinking about that one, actually. I mean, Witcher 3 is always a good one, but... <laughs> yeah, I highly doubt that. Um... I could try Psychonauts. I mean, I've been always wanting to try that one out. Unfortunately, you know, uh, I don't know if Broken, if Double Fine Studios can do it. If I can get Shantae and, and Shantae Half Genie Hero in the mail from Gamefly, I could try that. I could try, you know, making doing a let's play of it. Hope I don't get copper claim from the song in the first level of the game, but. I be in it, and honestly, I would not mind, you know, doing a let's play of it. Um, uh, what other games are coming out? Oh boy, hard to try. I don't know. I'll see what I can do. I'll work on something. Maybe I can get some. Maybe I can find something, you know, on sale or something. Maybe try that. Uh, I don't know. Uh. Personally, I don't know what exactly I'll do. I'll think of something. Uh, I'll just, you know, let these credits roll if you want me to. Mm. But, yeah, I'll think of something. I'll think of something. I'll think of something. Maybe I'll take a little break. Maybe do a few stream videos of, uh... Maybe me playing Destiny. Maybe, uh... Vlogs, depending. Oh god, my stomach. There was a choir in this game. I never noticed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll try something. Maybe I'll try streaming it on YouTube next time. It would be nice. And I can, you know, do fucking hour-long or two-hour-long videos on that thing. That'd be really nice. Hmm. I'll see what I can do. takes care of that. I'm Dragon King Mark, and this has been Arcania the Complete Tale. And I will see you guys in the next Let's Play. Hope to see you guys then. Like, favorite, subscribe to all the socials, and I will see you guys next time. Later!